Very good morning. Welcome to Chartbusters. Well, this is a show where we'll highlight all the buzzing stocks of the day. As we speak, the Nifty started off on the front foot. We're sitting with a gain of around 50 points. Saw a relative underperformance, though, coming in from the mid-cap index. So keep an eye out on that, Mark. And we've come off the high point of the day. Who's doing the heavy lifting today? Infosys. That's clearly the stock in there. Comes out of the set of numbers. And in fact, uh, they're going to be considering a buyback proposal as well. If you pull up a contribution chart, that 2.5% gain will account for uh, quite a large chunk of today's gains. Hey, Maglam. Hi, Nigel. You know, that's as far as the Nifty is concerned. Infos is doing uh, the heavy lifting out there. If you take a look at the contribution chart of the Nifty Bank, there you have the heavy lifting coming in from Axis Bank. Remember, yesterday it was ICICI Bank doing all the work out there. And today you have HDFC Bank, Axis Bank and ICICI together putting in a great show for the Nifty Bank. For the Nifty, though, it'll be very interesting to see whether we go ahead and cross the 100-day moving average placed at around 10,875. That's a mark that we have haven't crossed uh, sustainably over the last couple of months. So let's see what happens. The mid-cap index virtually in the red as we speak, sitting higher with just about 12 points in above the flat line. First up, all the top stories. Then we get cracking on individual stocks and stories. Infosys, top nifty gainer. The company will consider a buyback and special dividend on January 11th, along with the third quarter results. Remember, Infosys had earmarked $1.5 billion as capital to be returned to shareholders. And NNBC approves a buyback of around 3.2% of the total number of shares that are outstanding. They'll spend nearly around 1,000 crores. The stock, though, is under some pressure as the street is disappointed by the quantum of the buyback. The management tells CNBC TV 18 that steel prices have corrected, which has led to iron ore prices coming under some pressure. Print media companies, they gain as the INB ministry hikes rates for ads by about 25%. And private banks are in focus. Axis Bank rallies as City upgrades the bank to buy from neutral. Yes Bank as well as Miley in, in the red ahead of its board meet today. The board will decide on the potential successor and submit the final recommendations for the post of MD and CEO to the Reserve Bank of India. And quarter three earnings kickstart today with Indescent Bank reporting its numbers. And in other stocks to watch today, we have all cargo logistics higher in trade. The arm of the company will lease out about 3 million square feet of warehouse to Flipkart and Decathlon. Dilip Bilcon, that one sells as Crystal downgrades the company's long-term facilities uh, as well as the management. They say that the company might not meet the revenue guidance of 10,000 crore rupees this year due to a delay in order award. Well, the Nifty is holding with a gain of around 50 points odd. But remember, Brent crude prices are moving up. They're on the verge of moving towards that $60 per barrel. Two factors playing out there. There's hope that, in fact, there'll be a resolution mm -hmm. in terms of the trade dispute. That's point number one. And second point is OPEC uh, production cuts. That's the other point that's uh, driving those uh, prices higher. So because they've moved higher, I think it'll make sense to pull up some of those OMCs. HPCL, BPCL, as well as IOC, all three of them have moved to the low point of the day. So get the intraday chart of all those three stocks moving lower as we speak. But how do you trade the Nifty from here? Ashwini Gujral joins us now. Hi, Ashwini. We're holding at around the 10,850-odd mark. How would you trade the Nifty at these levels? See, holding is not good enough. Uh, life is about follow-through. And uh, if bond yields are higher, crude is higher, rupee is weakening. I mean, the case for financials, is probably just on a tactical basis a bit worse than it was yesterday. So my sense is that uh, while uh, IT could move higher, I think financials are not seeing uh, the sort of follow through that one would have hoped for. And that's where you can get short and possibly all the gains uh, in the financial stocks uh, could get taken away by the end because uh, you had a closing at the highs. After that, today you had a gap up you needed you know much better uh, cues to keep on moving forward still uptrend still uh, you know uh, things are okay but uh, just for the day you may not get uh, follow through given uh, the kind of news flow that's surrounding uh, the financials so having said that uh, you know again 10900 uh, 950 has acted as some sort of a resistance so having said that, uh, Tata Steel is a sell with a stop of 487, target of 470. India Cement is a sell with a stop of 92, target of 86. And uh, Matheson is a buy with a stop of 158, target of 170.
Ashwini, do you have a word on Raymond? Because uh, uh, remember, uh, a few months ago, the stock was at around 600, saw a sharp rally upwards of 800. But in just the last one year, three or four times, the stock has fallen from levels of around 800, 850. In fact, this time around, too, it's down about 5% uh, in January itself, currently at the lows of the day. See, incidentally, uh, you know, 860 is the 200-day moving average. Mm -hmm. So uh, possibly, you know, this correction can last up to, say, 750, 760. And from there, a fresh buying opportunity may come in. So that way, it looks like it's bottoming out. And at some point, we will cross uh, the 850, 860 zone. All right. Disclosures, Ashwini? We have uh, short positions on Bank Nifty. Okay, thanks a lot for joining in and giving us your view on the markets. We'll keep coming back to you through the course of the day. But on that note, let's also get in some market opinion coming in with uh, and from Han Andrew Holland, who we spoke with this morning. And he believes that the U.S. is headed towards recession. And he adds that private capex cycle will pick up in the second half of the year. Listen in. Big calls for, for this year are, are going to be, as I mentioned, emerging markets versus developed. Um, but also the dollar is going to weaken and uh, you know the the whilst everyone's been more optimistic after the jobs reports uh, in the u.s i still think that the u.s is heading towards recession and if you have that then earnings downgrades are going to happen in the u.s uh, very thick and fast and that's going to bring the uh, multiples down i'm actually more bullish than i have been uh, for for a long time and i started that in last september october so I am bullish, it's just that the developed markets will, will give us these opportunities. So I'm trying to point out the problems in, in, in global markets and that's the opportunity for us. Globally, we're gonna see interest rates not moving higher, which is what the expectation was coming into the year. So for the RBI here, you know, they've got the great opportunity of reducing interest rates by at least minimum 25 basis points very soon. Um, so I think it's gonna be great for the banking stocks in the, in the next quarter. So I'm less worried about India. You will get flows. It's the trade war. We're defensive. Um, if you have a recession, we're defensive. So I think, uh, I think India is going to stand out. But it's going to be a volatile um, three to four months, that's for sure. But the problems are going to be in developed markets, not uh, emerging markets. I think um, I'm, I'm running on the basis that, um, that we have a stable government. So let's work on that basis. If that's the case, then you know I think the capex cycle, private capex cycle, will pick up in the second half of the year. So you could see earnings kind of moving towards that, you know, that towards the 20% growth level, and that's where I think the index would match that in terms of growth in in between 19 and 20. Okay, all right. Time to slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll get chatting with the management of Wellspa in India. Lots of things to discuss, like the cotton price outlook, as well as their plans in terms of how they want to expand the domestic business. Save with us.